I'll dive straight into creating HDRIs, which is always going to be the first step when creating light rigs. If you look in the onset folder, you can find all the bracketed images. On set, we have data wranglers, which would note down where the HRI was shot, for which sequence, and so on, using a code system, which will later feed into a database artist can query to identify which brackets they need to create an HRI for the shot. I also create a little text file mapping the HRI shots to the shots to help with identifying which spheres belong to which shot. Open, open up the first folder, which has the HDRI data for HDB10. This is our first shot we will work on. You will see two folders in there, the source folder and a TIFF folder. Source has the raw files and JPEGs. We will work with the TIFF fol files though. I pre-converted the raw files to 16-bit sRGB TIFF files because Huggins, the stitcher we will be using, doesn't handle raw files very well. I also resized the files to make the stitching more manageable. The source is a 60 megapixel images from a Sony A7R4. Huggins assumes sRGB as the working color space. Open up the brackets in an image viewer. You can see the first brackets of shots have my hand in it. I did this to be able to identify the start of each HDRI capture. This is a quick way to add identifiers on set and help later when you have to organize the images, image files on disk. So every time I see a hand in the image, I know this bracket is the start of a new HDRI. Now let's jump into Huggins. Merging and stitching the image is pretty straightforward. Click on Load Images to add the brackets. Remember to skip the first five images since they have my hand in it. The number of images should be 5 times 3, a total of 15 files. Huggins will detect that these are stacked images, and because we know it was shot on a tripod, we can just say link positions based on the image metadata. On the right side, you can switch it to display as stacks to verify the grouping is correct. Go to masks and to crop down here and select the third image, which is usually a good middle exposure. Click on the edge of the image and you can see it already creates a mask. In my case, the frame area looks right, so you don't have to adjust it a lot. Just to show you, I've moved it a little bit. Now go to masks and click on add new mask. You can see a little bit the um, nodal bracket system in the shot, so I just want to mask this out. We could do this later in Nuke, but since we're already here, it's, it's actually uh, very quick to do that. So I'm just going to create an line around that area and at the end double click to finish the, the mask. Now you have to copy it to each of the other images. So just Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Okay, once it's done, click on the little GL preview icon. This will open up a new window. And in here, um, we just hit align so that it calculates how to align the different images. This will take a little bit. Okay, once that's done, you can see a panorama image in the preview. It's a little bit dark, so switch to the preview tab and under EV, change the exposure I think a value about 9 or uh, maybe a little bit brighter, 8.5 uh, should be good. This is just for preview, so it doesn't have any effect on the file at all. Now switch to move and drag. Um, I just want to show you if the image isn't quite aligned, you can just with the left click uh, with the mouse uh, drag the image or just hit straighten and it should straighten the panorama. Now let's close the preview and switch to the stitcher. In here, select calculate field of view and calculate optimal size. This will set the resolution correctly of your image. You also want to switch off the exposure corrected low dynamic range and switch on high dynamic range. So 
graphical output on EXR file um, in linear sRGB. Now hit stitch and save it in the folder 01. I'm just calling it HGRI01. It'll also ask you for the file name for the EXR, so I, I'm just calling it the same. And now you should get a batch um, image uh, window and a log file where it's stitching the files. Depending on how fast your computer is, this can take a few minutes. Here can you can see it's creating a bunch of temporary files to stitch the images together. All right, now uh, it's done stitching and you can see the hri01 hgr.exr file as a result. Let me open this up and just show you uh, the stitch result. All right, and there you go. That's a stitched image for first HGRI. And um, so the next step is to load this in Nuke and color grade the HGRI.